I started recording, then, then I will share my screen and then we can start. Okay, and um, share some reaction if you can see my screen. Okay, all right. So, okay. So, guys, today we are going to see how we can get or uh, derive data and uh, insights from our data. So. This today tutorial will focus on that. And what we are going to see is first of all, we are going to define what we mean by data insight. After that, we will see the best practice we can use to extract insights from the data. And we are going to see at the end how we can use AI to, to get insight from our data and how we can do that with the Google Sheets. So that will be our hands-on practice today. And, at the, and if there is a, any question, you, guys, you can raise them and we are going to answer them. And we will share with you also some references. So without further ado, let's get started with the, the definition of data insight. So, what do we mean by data insight while doing data analysis? The data insight are the valuable observation that we get from our analysis and that will help us to make a better business decision from a high level strategy to specific action. So in a simple word, this is what we mean by data insight. Now, the question you may ask to ourselves is, how can we get that? What are the best practices to extract data insight? So the first thing we, we are going to, to do as a practice is to start asking ourselves a question. So we need to define a, a specific question that we want to answer with our data. And because when you have your data and you don't know what you want to solve as a problem, you will waste your time with that data. You can come up with many things, but you don't know where you are going because you didn't know at, at the beginning where you want to go. So we need to start with the question. We need to define the, a specific question that we want to solve. Maybe it is a question, uh, it is a question regarding our organization or companies or it is a challenge in our company that we want to solve or there are some predictions we want to make so we need to at least start with the equation this the second step in the best practice practices is to establish a repeatable process what do we mean by that we want to to set up a kind of a pipeline. I mean, different steps that we are going to follow and we can repeat them to do our analysis. So I give an example. We can start with the data cleaning, analyzing, visualizing, and interpreting. So when we set that one, we establish that one. I think there is a, a question. Uh, let me see. Is there any question? This guy, is there any question? If not, show some reaction so that I can continue. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, we are with the establishing a repetitive process. 
repeatable process. So, and I was explaining, so we need to, to set the different step you are going to follow during our data analysis to get the right insights. And as an example, I said we can start with a data cleaning, data analyst, analyzing, data uh, visualizing and interpreting. So when we set up those, we, we set up those two steps, the next step that we, we will call best practice is to ensure data credibility. We, what do we mean by data credibility? We want to make sure that the data we are using is accurate and reliable, that we can trust our data source. We don't want to use a fake or a wrong data source. Maybe you are in your company and you want to use uh, the, the data of your company to do a given analysis. Don't generate yourself a data because you are using, because you are in, uh, you are in the area of AI, don't generate the data. Better use the data from your company to make sure that it is the accurate one. So this is what we mean by ensure, ensuring data credibility. When we are done with those steps, it is time to visualize our data. Then it is the time when we will start uh, plotting, uh, design some charts to see the, the pattern and the trend from our data. And uh, uh, what we are going to do is to look for how our data behave. And uh, by doing that, it will help us to figure out a meaningful pattern. And then we can make, we can, we can do some interpretation based on the behavior, based on the patterns and the trends. And that will lead us to make a good decision in our, in our company. All right. So the next thing we will consider as a best practice is to have what is to avoid confusing correlation with position. Because if you don't, because they are, they are a little bit uh, similar. And if you don't know the, the, the difference, it might, it might mislead you to wrong conclusion. Okay. So what the difference between correlation and, and the position, I, let me give a simple uh, statement that will help us to understand the, the difference is correlation is often related to it is the uh, it is the relation between two variables without cause and the effect, which means that the one is not the cause of the other one and the other one is not the effect of the first one. But when we are, an example I may give is, um, I can give the number of um, umbrellas sold on a rainy day, okay? So we have another, uh, we have a, a variable, which is the number of umbrellas sold. The another one is rainy days. So, when we in rainy days, the number of umbrella sold is not because that it rain that we saw this number umbrella. No, they are related, but the rainy days is not the cause of selling many umbrellas because even if it doesn't rain, we can still sell many umbrellas because people may want to. Um, to get protected, protected from sun, they can go and buy umbrellas. You see? Now, when it comes to causation, it is the relationship between the two variables, but here we have cause and effect. The two variables are related by this relationship of cause and effect. Uh, let me give an example. 
an example that we can give is regular regular exercise can lead to um, a good physic a good physic fitness and you can see that somebody who somebody who is doing a regular exercise for sure you will have a good physical fitness because they are related if he's not doing good a regular exercise he cannot have these results so in these scenarios the two variables are cause and effect so this is what we can this is how we can understand the correlation and causation knowing the difference between them and avoid confusing them okay when we we know that what we need to do also as a best practice is to consider the historical data why do you want to consider them because just past data really inform us on our current analysis so you know that when you are using when sometimes when you want to know the present we need to look at the past and the past will inform us on what will may happen in the present those are the reason why we want to use the, his, the historical data because they will add meaningful information to our analysis so after that we can we, uh, we can pull relevant data pull relevant data here is to combine data from various sources for comprehensive view okay what do we mean by that i will give you a scenario where we can we are going to use various sources let us assume that you you want to collect information from of a, of a country for instance okay and uh we we don't we don't we don't go to any any cities uh, any city all of the cities of the country and we just focus on one city and we collect the information that is not going to help us to have a comprehensive view of what is going on because sometimes realities from city to city are different so it's better to collect information from different cities which will uh, assimilate we will assimilate in our context uh, uh, as various sources so this one also is one of the best practice while we want to get the right insights. The other one is to facilitate data assets. Why do you want to facilitate data assets? You want to make sure that all the relevant departments, sorry, you want to make, you want to make sure that our data is accessible to all relevant departments and uh, as you are working on a team make sure that you are using a platform or you are using a tool that will that will be shared with your colleagues so that they can see what is going on if there is a, an information if there is a, a chart if there is a, any summary you did based on your data they can have access to that and also the data is available for all of them this is also a good practice and the the next one is to invest in data visualization tool we see earlier how visualization is good during the during getting data insights and there are some platforms that are very specialized in data visualization and they can help us to have a good a good insight from our data and it will help us also to interpret data efficiently and some of them are 
we have Tableau, we have Microsoft Power BI, we have Google Data Studio, and other one. So those are the good practices we can we can use to extract data information from our data. Okay, so now we want to see because after getting the insights from our data, we want to see what are the actionable insights. So here we are going to see the characteristic of actionable insights. So we want to make sure that the insight we get is very is relevant and specific. It is relevant to our company goals or our company challenge. And it is defined for specific question of specific problem that we want to solve. Apart from that, one of the characteristics is to make sure that the user insight is clear and understandable for, for stakeholder and is not even the, the stakeholder that do not have a technical skills they can get easily understanding they can they can understand easily our data insights and we want to make sure that the insight also is supported by evidence that it is it can be trust it come from a, a trust data source we don't want that as we we we, we see here we see earlier when we use the best practice those are the characteristics for sure we, we are going to have because they, we, they follow basically the best practice, okay? We want to make sure that the unactionable insight is timely, which means that it is provided promptly to allow quick action. And we want to make sure that it is feasible and measurable. Feasible to make sure that it is realistic and practical for our company capabilities because we don't want an insight that will take that will take more than our organization capability if they if our organization does not does not have capability to put in practice the insight we get from our data our data then at that moment, we can't say that it is feasible. So we want to make sure that our insight is feasible. And also the insight is measurable, which means that we can track the progress of our insights while you are implementing that insight by using some key performance indicator. So when we have those those characteristics for an insight, then we can say that this insight is an actionable insight. Now, after seeing, after no, after seeing what data insight is, what are the best practices to extract data insights, and how also what are the characteristics of actionable insight now we are going to see how we can do data analysis or how we can derive insights from data by using ai and this this will be uh what we are going to use in the practice session okay so the first thing we are going to do when we want to use ai to derive insights from data is to basically you know google sheet because uh in this challenge we are using google sheets so uh this get information from data using ai is with a google sheet what i'm going to present actually okay so the first thing you need to do is to create a google account why google account because google sheet is for google so we need to have a google account the second the second thing you need to do is to go to google workspace of marketplace 
And when we go to that platform, we will search Gemini. We will search Gemini AI for sheet. After searching Gemini AI for sheet, we will install it. And after the installation is done, we will go to our Google Sheet where our data is. And then we will click on extension and we will select Gemini AI for Sheets. After doing this, then we can use the formula analyze and we will provide as an argument our data range. We can also use uh, Gemini. I didn't provide it here, but I will show you that in the in the hands-on practice, we can use also equal Gemini and we will provide as a, as a parameter, a prompt and a data range, okay? And at the end, what we need to do is to review, always we need to review the AI inside generating. Whenever you are using AI to generate content or to generate anything, make sure that you guys are reviewing what the what what AI has generated for you. So this, and uh, we are going to see that we are going for the practical session. But before that, if if, the, if there is a a question there, you guys you can raise it. Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, guys, um, I'm here for you. If there is a, a question, just let me know. That's, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, um, thank you so far for the for the presentation. Um, my only question is this. Um, so when we have charts, graphs, things like pie charts, um, is the in this case let's say like the gemini ai for sheets is it able to also analyze uh, visualizations like charts and graphs other than um, direct values from data ranges okay that's a good question and uh so far when uh, during my research i didn't see a is doing that but uh, rather it takes text and it analyzes the, the insight of the test. Maybe in the future, it might, it might take as an argument, a chart, uh, an image, and then provide some insight from that. But for the time being, I don't, I don't see that. OK, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Is there any other question? If not, show me some reaction and we can do the practice session. Okay, good. So we said that the first thing we need to do is to create Google accounts. I assume that all of all of you have Google accounts. So I'm not going to show here how to create Google accounts, okay? So the next step is to go to Google, Google Ma a Workspace Marketplace. So, and here we are. So I will click on this one. Okay. And the second step we say we need to search Gemini, Gemini AI for sheet. Okay, and uh, this one, the second one, okay? You will click on the second one, and these windows will appear. And here, I have already installed it. Otherwise, it will be written, install it, install, and you will click on the that button to install it. When you install, when you install it, it will it will put here now and install okay so when it is done 
we can go to our sheet where we have our data. Okay. Uh, let me go here. Okay. Where we have our data. And then and then we can we will click on extension. When you click on extension, we have Gemini AI for sheet here. So we can go directly by using formula or uh, full sheet analysis uh, and customize the instruction. I will go for customize instruction, okay? And the reason why I'm going for personal instruction is because I want to person I want to give a personal to the to the AI. So I will say maybe um, you you are you are a data you are a data analysis. <laughs> Uh, am I writing that way? Okay, you are data analyst. Okay. Um, provide concise, concise, and go to the point. Provide concise insights. And go to the point. Something like that. Okay. And then I will save the, the persona that I gave to the AI. I'm waiting a little bit. It's loading. So after it has been loading, you will click on Go Smarter, okay? You click on this one, Go Smarter, okay? Uh, and then you will come back to your sheet. Okay, do like that and come back to our sheet. So, uh, so let us assume that you want to we have we have uh, the the issue priority distribution, okay, and we want to get from that summary the insights. So what we need to do is to let me let me remove this. Uh, I done it here. Let me remove this like that. It will come here and. Type equal. After tapping equal, you will write analysis and analyze. Okay, we will we tap analyze, and then we will provide the data range. So I provide from here, here, from here. So I provide that one, and I then I click, and it will generate. Yeah, you have seen it generate inside. So, so what we need to do basically is to, is to copy and paste the, the inside somewhere. So we copy, okay. And then let me let me remove this first of all. So where where you want to to paste you want to paste uh, the AI generated insights? Make sure that you here, for instance, you come here and uh, okay, you select where you want to paste it. You select it like that, something like that, and then you come here. And when where it is written merge cells, then you click on 
you click on that it will measure everything for you then here you can paste you can paste the inside and here you choose you choose paste a value only like this because if you don't you don't paste the value it will paste just the formula for you okay so now you can go to the what the AR has generated for you and read it and see if it is the same alignment with the work yourself you, you know already and uh, if there is anything you, you want to change you change it if not okay so for instance let us read the first one he said inside from issue data here are some insights derived from the provided data high high volume of major issue the majority of the issues 427 are categorized as major indicating a significant focus on addressing issue with a potentially high impact uh, which is uh, which is uh, clear and next because when you are seeing uh the, the summary here okay let me first of all explain what we what, what i did here for the distribution so we have the number of the issue per priorities first of all we have a four priorities we have a blocker that has a value one critical has the value two major value three minor value four and true value five those are the, the the data we have provided for you for this challenge okay and this is the number of issue this is the number of resolved issue and this is the number of unresolved issue so when we have this some you have summarized those uh issue with a priority here we ask the ai to, get, to generate information to generate insight and this is what he he does and uh, the, the the first line that we, we read was regarding this one the measure regarding the measure where he's he's saying the measure is the one that has the the most uh, uh resolve I mean, the most of the some issue and uh, so on with the, uh, the other things he said about it. So the, the other thing we, we, we can do also is to use Gemini, okay? You will use the formula Gemini. So let me do that here, okay? Uh, Okay. Uh, let me put here prompt. Okay, the prompt is saying if some prints have a significant more unresolved issue, what factor could have contributed to this? Okay. Uh, this is just a simple prompt. A simple question we want to to uh, to provide for which we want to provide uh, an answer, and we want to use Gemini to help us. So we can come here, um, write equal, and write Gemini. After writing Gemini, we provide first the prompt. So this is the style of the prompt. And then uh, if you don't want to provide it like that, you can use you can use quote, uh, um, quotation and write the prompt and say if some some strength, da 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 da. Okay. But me, I'm going to use because I have provided in the cell, I will use the cell. This cell. And then I will provide the range of the data. So I provide this one, come to here. Then I will close the parentheses. And then 
and wait for for it for some second then back they have provided answers so what we need to do is to copy um we need to copy and paste somewhere else you can paste it here okay right so this is how we we do it uh is that clear for everyone okay good okay so if everything is clear for everyone so we can wrap up this session and uh uh, a TV. I, I will. I will continue my research if I, I have anything that can answer your that question you have read. I will share with you guys because me too. I'm looking for something like that where we can provide the the chart for the AI and to analyze it. Maybe the I don't know other LLMs are doing that with Chai GPT. But if you want to have those. Uh, features you need to go for the pay version but we are not asking you to to pay for anything okay so that's it mr emmanuel yared uh mav wendy and uh i mean everything is okay for you if you show me some reaction, then we wrap up the session. If not, you can raise your It's okay. Question. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I think there's a question for you in the chat box. Ah, okay. Let me read that one. I didn't know. Okay. Uh, Larissa, okay. Could you please repeat how you connect the Google Sheet with the LLM? Okay. Fine. Um, we say, first of all, that we need to, to have Google account, and you already have a Google account. Okay. The, the, the second step is to go to Google Workspace or Marketplace. Marketplace, okay? So they have the, the Marketplace here. Let me, put, let me send you the, the link. Um, uh, I don't know if it will work like this. I'm not getting it. No, it is the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Let me share that in the chat first. So, when you go to the Google Marketplace, search Gemini AI for sheet. Okay, you search for Gemini AI for sheet. And you will see here. The second one is it is written Gemini AI for sheet. This is the one we are looking for. Okay, so you click on this one. When you click on that, you'll have this window. Okay, and this web page. Normally, if I didn't install it before, the, it will written on the button install. And then you will click on this button to install it. And when the installation is done, it will now write here and install. Okay. And after you're done with this step, go to your Google Sheet where your data is. Okay. And check on select an extension. When you select extension, make sure that it is appear in the extension Gemini AI for sheet. If not, 
make sure maybe sometimes you can't you can see that why because you are you are you are using many google accounts make sure that the account you use to create to install the gemini ai for sheet in the same account you are using for your google sheet okay and if it is the same for sure when it comes to extension you will see gemini ai for sheet then you come here to customize instruction. If you don't want to customize the instruction, there's no problem. You can right away start writing in the in your sheet. You can use the formula. I mean, let me show you some some of the formulas here. Okay. Normally, you should, you should put here. Yeah. You can use Gemini as formula. You can use write. You can use translate. You can use rephrase. You can use style. You can use summarize. You can use ana analyze. Because we really want to get insight from our data, we use analyze in this tutorial. Okay, but you have a lot of things to do. Even sentiment analysis, you can do that. So here are some of the formula you can use. So we have, in this tutorial we have. You have seen two Gemini and uh, analyze because we want to see insights from our data. That's why you use those. So, is that clear now, Larissa? Thank you. All right. So, okay. If there is no question, um, I will stop the recording and then uh, we can stop the recording.